everybody, uh, this is Mr. Beckstrom, and today we're going to be looking at Section 6A. Uh, this is on controlling your finances, and most of the math done in this section is really kind of converting expenses around and uh, taking other ways to look at them, just so you can um, complete a budget and do other things. So let's talk about some of the key points that they make during this. Now, I understand a lot of us have been uh, adulting for quite some time, and we might know this, or... We've already used this, but um, this is just part of the section here. So the first part is controlling your finances. So uh, know your balance, uh, avoid bouncing a check or having your debit card rejected. Remember, banks charge absorbent fees right now every time you bounce a check or try or overdraw your account. Um, it can be forty dollars per time that you do it, and then suddenly you have a negative balance. And uh, then you have to pay off that balance before you can actually get any money to spend. It's a, it's a pretty vicious cycle that a lot of people go through. Uh, know what you spend. In particular, keep track of your debit and credit card spending. So keep some type of like secondary uh, control over how much you spend. You know, your, your bank will show you all your debits and credits and all that. But you should have something also on paper so that way if uh, something gets taken out that shouldn't have or something happens that shouldn't have, then you know. Uh, for example, I just got charged $60 uh, for a, a web um, site service that I never even bought. And uh, so anyways, uh, things like that do happen. Uh, don't buy an impulse. Think first and buy only if you are sure the purchase makes sense for you. Uh, a lot of us are impulse buyers. Um, uh, stores and corporations, they uh, they really take advantage of this. Notice that when you go to Walmart, as you're uh, going through the checkout, they have all those cool little gadgets and candy bars and sodas right there because they know that there's a good chance you're going to impulse buy those. Um, make a budget. Don't overspend it. All right. Uh, fourth step process for making a budget. So step one is determine your average monthly income. Be sure to include an average monthly amount for any income you do not receive monthly, such as once per year payments. So uh, for example, if you do receive a payment once per year, then just kind of divide that by 12 in order to see how much that affects your monthly income. Determine your average monthly expenses. Be sure to include an average amount for expenses that don't recur monthly, such as uh, such as expenses for tuition, books, vacations, insurance, and holiday gifts. Determine your net monthly cash flow by subtracting your total expenses from your total income and make adjustments as needed. Now, I can't say this too much, but we have way too many unexpected expenses um, that, that we never think we're gonna have. We drop our phone, our phone cracks, or maybe our phone just stops working, and. $200 to fix that or $150 to fix this. So lots of extra expenses. And insurance costs. A lot of people have a little bit of trouble with the terminology. So let's go over that. So the overall cost of an insurance policy usually involves some combination of the following. The premium is the amount you pay to purchase the policy. Premiums are often paid once or twice a year. So sometimes you may pay them more often. So that that's what we pay in order to purchase our insurance. The deductible is the amount that you are personally responsible before the insurance company will pay anything. For example, if your auto insurance has a $1,000 deductible per incident, this means that you will pay the first $1,000 for any damage from any crash. And they love that because in a whole lot of crashes that, like small crashes that are $1,000 or less, uh, they don't end up having to pay a thing. And a copayment usually applies to health insurance and is the amount you pay each time you use a particular service that is covered by the insurance policy. For example, if you have a $50 copayment for office visits, you'll pay $50 each time you visit a doctor's office on uninsured visit. Um, yeah, the healthcare costs are incredibly high in our country. All right, so let's go ahead and just take a look at a couple examples, really how we kind of convert um, 
convert expenses from monthly to annual, weekly, that kind of stuff. So here I want to find out um, what is the monthly cost for Sandy and what is the annual cost? That means the yearly cost for Sandy. So, so Sandy fills the tank of her car an average of once every two weeks at a cost of $35 per tank. Her cable TV internet service costs $80 per month. So let's first figure out the annual cost. Annual, is this annual two? What's that one? Fixed up for some reason. It must be something like that that only has one A. All right, annual, annual costs. All right, let's do the easier one first. So the TV internet service is $80 per month. So the TV, and I'm gonna write I'm going to do my unit fractions that we learned. So $80, right, per one month. So every month I'm paying $80. And I want to convert this to an annual amount. So I need to change the months to years. So remember, the months need to cancel out. So that I'm going to put the months on top. So we know that 12 months are in one year. And then you multiply those together, and I think you're going to get uh, 960. Let me put my calculator at 80 times 12. Yep, sure enough, 960. So that's uh, $960 annually. All right, so 960. Now let's go ahead and figure out the gas. The gas. We're going to do the same kind of thing here. We're going to say uh, we spend an average of $35, so 35 for every two weeks, every two weeks. All right, now I want to convert this over to annual, so I know that there are 52 weeks. 52 weeks, remember I'm trying to get rid of the weeks, so I put them on opposite sides. Um, and there's 52 weeks in one year. And when we do this, we're just going to multiply across the top. So uh, 35 times 52, 35 times 52. And then we're going to divide by the bottom, which is just 2 times 1, which is 2. And we get $910. So that's $910. So my total annual expenses is going to be the 910 plus that 960. That's $1,870 per year just for the TV, internet, service, and uh, the gas. And then divide that by 12. And it's about $155.83 every month that I'm going to need to budget out for those two things. All right. And, uh, all right, let's take a look at another example here. Okay, so for this one here, I want to calculate my monthly net cash flow. So I first want to figure out my average monthly income, and then I want to figure out my average monthly expenses, and then I want to determine my cash flow uh, by subtracting my expenses from my income. So the positive number, that means that I'm making more than I'm spending, and if it's a negative more, that means I'm spending more than I'm making. All right, so let's go ahead and start with income here. So income, income, and remember we're converting everything to a monthly amount. So the part-time job, well, that already is in a monthly amount, so 1,200. The student loan, I could use that unit fraction again, but I think we can figure this out pretty easily. If it's uh, $7,000 a year, we just divide by 12 in order to get that monthly amount. So 583.83 or 583.33. So 583.33. And finally, for income, we have a scholarship of 8,000 per year. 8,000. And we're going to divide that by 12 as well. And that's 666.67. All right, and that is 666.67. So let's 
add all of these up here to get our total monthly income. So uh, 1,200 plus 583.33 plus 656.67, and we get a total of 2,450. 2,450 dollars. All right, and this is our monthly amount per so uh, per month. All right, now let's go ahead and see if we can figure out our expenses. And remember, we're going to convert those uh, into monthly amounts as well. So the first one is 600. 600, so that's already a monthly amount. The second one is $70, but it's per week, but it's per week. So, you know, once again, you can use those unit fractions, but I'm going to kind of do a little bit quicker here because I'm going to say there's uh, $70 per week and there's 52 weeks in a year. So the annual amount is 3640. And then if you divide by 12, uh, you're going to get 303.33. 303.33 and tuition and fees is 7500 per year so 7500 divided by 12 and we're going to get 625 so 625 and health insurance is $40 per month so that is already calculated in a monthly. Entertainment is 200 per month. And phone is $65 per month. All right. So we're going to add all those up together. So I have 600 plus 303.33 plus 625 plus 40 plus 200 plus 65. And I get 1833.33. So 1833.33. All right. So let's see what my um, monthly flow is, or my monthly cash flow to be exact. 2450 minus 1833.33. And it's a positive $616.67. So this is how much I have beyond my monthly expenses. All right, guys, uh, I hope this helped. If you have any questions, please let me know, and I hope you all have a great rest of your week. Thanks.